here we are, you know, seven months into uh, uh, this year, and yet uh, they've not passed this bill. Now, they're not, not going to repeal and replace Obamacare. It's been around too long. And the American people have gotten accustomed to it. Uh, governors have gotten accustomed to this Medicaid expansion. And so trying to pull it back is, is really not going to work. But what they can do, though, is move it away from government control, uh, where the states have more uh, control over what happens, and individuals have more control. So when it's all said and done, here's what's going to happen. You're not going to have an employer mandate anymore. You're not going to have the individual mandate. Uh, the Medicaid expansion will be there. Uh, the governors will have more control over their Medicaid populations and how to get them care. And uh, in a lot of the Me Obamacare taxes will probably go. Uh, but uh, they've had a tough time getting there. But if they can't do health care reform, I don't know how they would ever do tax reform. Well, the president could tweet, could tweet. <laughs> you know, when, when you step back, all right, full disclosure, uh, Donald Trump's a friend of mine. We've played a lot of golf together over the years. He was a donor of mine. And uh, when I was speaker, I was having a tough week. Uh, I could always count on the fact Donald Trump would call me, cheer me up, pat me on the back. Uh, he's a good guy. Uh, but uh, uh, president? I never really saw him as president. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My phone's ringing. The Donald. Hey, Speaker, hey, thanks for the endorsement. I said, well, Donald, uh, you know, you weren't my first choice. No, I, I know, I know, I know. I said, no, 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 Donald, you, you weren't my second or my third choice. <laughs> I said, but, I, but if you're the nominee, I'm going to vote for you. And, uh, and I did, but he keeps getting in his, in his own way. You know, if you step back and you can figure out what they're really doing, what they're really doing, frankly, is good for the economy. Uh, good for people who, you know, have a right of center perspective. Uh, he's actually doing all the right things. Uh, but uh, he just keeps getting in his own way, like criticizing Comey or criticizing the, the press every day. There's a couple of things you learn when you get into politics. One is you never get into, into a fight with people who buy ink by the barrel. <laughs> he does it every day. Uh, there's another old political saying. Never get into a pissy match with a skunk. <laughs> he does it every day. <laughs> now, it may have worked during the campaign, but uh, I just I think he would do himself well if he would just slow the tweeting down and just focus on what he's doing and not being critical. I mean, going after uh, uh, Megan Brzezinski or Joe Scarborough, what, 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 what the hell's the point? The heir apparent uh, was uh, Kevin McCarthy from uh, Bakersfield, California, but uh, the Knucklehead Caucus uh, decided they weren't going to vote for him. Now, these are the guys uh, in the Republican Party who are, uh, you could call them right of the right, they're anarchists, they're for nothing. 